Enterprise databases manage your organization's most sensitive data. Social security numbers, credit card numbers, customer lists, and employee information make databases attractive targets for hackers looking to steal data and disrupt businesses. Moving these databases to the Oracle Cloud allows you to leverage the built-in security features of the Oracle database as well as state-of-the-art automation you can use to help you keep your data secure. My name is Michael Massaros, Director of Product Management for Oracle Database Security. Oracle Autonomous Database frees administrators from the drudgery of common management tasks such as database tuning, patching, and backups. Instead, they can focus their valuable time on high value tasks such as understanding their sensitive data and what they can do to keep it secure. In the cloud, security is a shared responsibility between the provider and the user. Oracle Data Security Cloud Service makes the database administrator's job easy with security features that are integrated and easy to use. For example, a critical first step in protecting data is understanding what sensitive data you have and how much of it you have, as well as where it's located. Let us take a look at how Data Security Cloud Service makes this easy. So we're going to start at the Data Security Dashboard and we'll select Discover. This takes us to Discover Wizard. I can select whether I want to collect sample data and the security resource groups allow me to manage security for different users of the data security cloud service across my enterprise. I'll select my production database instance for doing discovery, my prod CC schema, and then continue. Now I can select the sensitive types for sensitive data discovery that I'm going to look for. I have personally identifiable information, financial information, and healthcare information to choose from. I can also create my own sensitive data types or create new types based on existing, uh, existing ones. So I will choose personally identifiable information and continue with my discovery. I now see a list of the sensitive data types that were discovered. And I can inspect the different, uh, the different sensitive types. The, I can also view the quantity of information. If I select report, I can go to a complete report detailing the types of information that was found. I can also explore this interactively and drill down into the exact types of sensitive data that were discovered. Now that I know something about the sensitive data that I have, I can now think about how to protect it in test, development, and production environments. We can't allow unauthorized users to access business critical data. At the same time, having the ability to share real production data with test and development teams helps us build and deploy better applications more quickly. This is where data masking can help. Data masking protects sensitive data by selectively replacing it with fictitious values that appear real to applications. Masked databases can be safely shared with test and development teams without risking exposure of the sensitive information. Let's see how easily we can create a masked copy of a production database with Data Security Cloud Service. So to mask the data, I'm going to start with the sensitive data that we found during the discovery process. I can review the sensitive data types that were found and select the ones that are relevant for my masking, masking job. In this case, I'll choose to mask customer date of birth. Next, I can define how I want to mask this data. For birth dates, I can select a custom range for the random dates that are used as fictitious birth dates in my masked data set.
clicking on continue, I will create my masking policy. Now this masking policy can be applied to a cloned copy of my application database. I can decide whether I want to mask the data now or at some point in the future and then submit the masking job to start. After a few moments, the masking completes and I'll see a report summarizing the data values that were masked and the quantity of data that was, that was also masked. I can view the results of the masking in a tabular report and I can also explore these with the interactive graphic report. Now I'd like to introduce George Shabbat, Director of Product Management for Oracle Database Security, who will show us how we can protect our data in production environments as well. Thanks, Michael, for the introduction. So now, since we know we actually discovered the sensitive data types in certain databases, now we have to focus on understanding what to audit in the production databases. So let's look at the next phase of the service, which is auditing. And auditing basically allows us to uh, monitor databases. In a sense, we can configure audit policies and manage audit policies. We can also manage the uh, data retention requirements. And we can also detect um, different potentially malicious activities via alerts. And we also have very rich reporting capability in the tool. So now let's see how we can configure our tool, our service to actually monitor databases. In this case, again, referring to the earlier demo scenario, we have one specific database, which is a production database, which contains credit card information. What we will do in this demo, we will actually configure the Data Security Cloud Service to monitor activities access to this critical information. As you can see on the uh, dashboard, we see very informative information about the targets, alerts, audit trails. But let's start with the audit wizard. The audit wizards will step us through the process of configuring the service to monitor databases. In the first phase, we have to select the database we want to audit. And then we actually can go ahead and focus on configuring the different audit settings on the database. In the next step, we actually can retrieve the audit policies from that database so we understand what is being audited, monitored on this database. Since we retrieved this information earlier, we don't have to do that. We can go to the next step. This step actually is very critical, the third step, which is actually we can review and provision audit and alert policies. Um, this is where we can define the audit level. Audit level is basically uh, a group of predefined unified audit policies. And we created these audit levels to make the configuration process easier. Besides the audit level, we can also define the compliance policies we want to implement. In this case, we have one CIS policy. And we also have the option to create and uh, actually uh, implement or deploy custom audit policies. Custom audit policies can be already implemented on a database. So here we can enable or disable them. As the fourth step in this process, we also have to identify what kind of alerts we want to receive. So again, if you want to make changes in the settings, we can step through the actual graphical user interface and change the levels, the policies, the predefined and custom audit policy, and also can select the specific alert policies we want to utilize. And these alert policies can be anything related to failed logins, user creation, critical database changes, audit policy changes. Once we're happy with our configuration, we can actually go ahead and continue and provision all of the settings on the database. Then at the next step, we can actually start the audit collection. We will see the database we selected earlier, the call center production database, which is already added and collecting the audit data from the database. Uh, so we can actually uh, either add new databases if we want to, or we can specify also if we want to um, collect and clean up the trails which are on the database and target databases. Once this is done, we can go to the last step of the audit trail. And actually, we can see all of the running trails. And we can adjust, start, stop these trails as needed. There is one more important aspect which we have to uh, address here. And that aspect is to basically specify the audit data retention period. 
Each company has different retention periods. We can specify it for our targets. Once uh, we have established all of the settings, uh, all of the set all of the policies and establish the uh, data collection period, then we can go ahead and wait until the actual events are going to be uh, recorded in database audit logs and present these events in alerts or report format. Now that my audit policies are defined and I'm collecting all the data, I can rest assured that I audit records are being gathered and stored securely in the Oracle Cloud according to retention policies which I defined. So data is being continuously monitored by the data security cloud services. Now let me actually go to the next step and let's look at what kind of uh, alerts and reports we will be able to see based on the activities on the database. Um, as you remember, we configured the policies earlier. We are in the audit trails page. And now I'm going to go to the alerts page. Alerts ultimately are the most important and most interesting events which I collect from the cloud service. And these alerts can be potentially malicious activities. So if I click on the alert tab, I will be able to see all the alerts. As you can see, uh, we will be able to see the target name, the alert name. And what I will focus is I'm going to look, click on the actual call center product data production database, which I selected. And once I click on the alert details, I will be able to see all the attributes of the alert. So I'll be uniquely identify the users and activities which took place. Besides that, I can also filter my alerts based on different uh, uh, parameters, if you will. And I can also change the status of the alerts. I can close the alerts. On the reporting side, we have a very rich reporting capability in the cloud service. Uh, we have audit reports. We have discovery reports and masking reports. And I think Michael covered the discovery and masking reports earlier. So I'm going to focus on the audit reports. Uh, one of the key reports, which is actually the all activity reports, actually shows all of the different activities which are being generated on the database. If I click on the same database I have monitored, again, I will be able to see all the attributes of the uh, audit event which was generated by the service. I can also obviously uh, click on other um, items too. I can also create a summary. So again, in the summary, I will be able to see how many targets, users, hosts I have, and also how many activities. Uh, if I want to change the, how this actual report looks, I can basically filter based on the columns. And I can also save this report as a new report. So we have, if I have the requirement to have a customized report, I can do it here. Uh, last but not least, I can also generate and download, download these reports. But besides these all activities report, I also have entitlement reports, uh, audit chat setting changes reports, login failure reports, data access reports. Again, this is important because I wanted to see who is accessing credit card information, the schema changes. So the reporting engine is very flexible. And then we will be able to provide the information either in a default format, again, because these are reports are default, or in a customized format where I can actually customize the report and provide this information either for internal audit requirements or for compliance requirements or for security. These reports can be used for different compliance requirements, such as GDPR, or for internal audit and security requirements. And with that, I would like to hand it back to Michael. Thank you, George. So we've seen how, with just a few clicks, we were able to manage some key aspects of data security. We discovered sensitive data, masked the database, defined database audit policies, and generated audit reports. The automation provided by Data Security Cloud Service made these previously complex tasks very easy. Oracle Autonomous Database lets administrators focus on the important aspects of managing their sensitive data assets. And Data Security Cloud Service makes it easy for them to accomplish this with proven enterprise-class data security solutions. It's easy to use, requires no deployment, and makes industry standard best practice data security solutions accessible to everyone. To learn more, please visit www.oracle.com slash database.